The, the point of the study was really to look at the natural history of headache after traumatic brain injury and also to characterize the headache because if you look at um, secondary headache, post-traumatic headache definitions, there's nothing in there about what kind of headaches people have after traumatic brain injury. It talks about the, the severity of the injury and that headaches have to occur within seven days. And it's acute if it's less than three months and chronic if it's more than three months. Otherwise, there's nothing there about the headache. So the idea was to get information on prevalence, incidence, the frequency, and what are the headaches like? And also, how impactful are they on people's quality of life day to day? These, again, were people with moderate to severe injuries. Um, primarily, they were male. The average age was maybe about 43. Um, we published our one-year data in 2011 in the Journal of Neurotrauma. Um, at that time, and the, and the data is very similar to the 316 people we have managed to retain at five years, um, primarily male, primarily injured in motor vehicle accidents, um, well-educated, most of them finished high school, um, and um, again, with a moderate to severe cohort, um, many of them have had post-traumatic amnesia for a significant amount of time after the injury, even up to a month. Um, about 17% of them had pre-existing headaches. At one year, uh, newer worse headache was about 38%, which wasn't that much difference than at baseline. And at five years, it was 36%. So if you have headaches uh, right after the, the injury, you tend to retain those headaches. Now I want to be clear that every time we ask the question, do you have a new or worse headache, it doesn't necessarily mean that each the same patient is answering the question at each time point. However, um, you have the whole population's information on time point. So prevalence was well over one third of the population and it stayed that way. The incidence um, dropped, as you might expect. Fewer people would have headaches the further out from the injury they had, but you still had some people with newer or worse headaches, even at five years. Not very many, but they were still there. Um, however, life happens and some of those were people that would have another concussion somewhere between year one and five. It was nice to have something to tell the patients. It was nice to have real data to tell patients when they say, doctor, when, am I, when is this headache going to go away? When am I going to get better? Because we, before that we had no data. You know, you could say, oh, maybe six weeks or three months, but really it's a lot longer than that. So that was, that was a very important part of the study. But the other one, and, and the one that was very interesting to me, was using international um, classification of headache disorders um, information to characterize the headaches. So um, why, why would it be important to characterize the headache? Well, I, I think it's important because we don't have any evidence-based treatment for headaches after traumatic brain injury. So I wanted to know, are these tension headaches? Are these mild to moderate? Are they more like migraine, moderate to severe? So it turns out that the, the most common type of headache that fit into the primary headache criteria was migraine or probable migraine. This was well over 50% of those headaches that could be classifiable. Second most common was tension. And, and, and I think this was a little bit different from some things that had been published in the past where most people thought that tension headache was the primary headache type. And again, I want to be really careful to say this is not a primary headache, but you know, if it looks like a duck and smells like a duck, it is migraine. <laughs> so, um, so I think that's important because when we start looking into clinical trials to see what kind of medications may help these people, I think if it has features of migraine, we should try drugs that are migraine specific. So, uh, so I think that was important too. Um, it turns out that over five years, if you have a certain kind of headache in the beginning, you're going to have it at the end. So that was quite invariable as well. If you had migraine at three months, you were likely to have it at five years. Um, 
not surprisingly, when you looked at the pain scales and the impact, because the headaches were mostly migraine and probable migraine, the impact was quite impressive. Um, if you use HIT-6 scores, the headache impact test, that asks you questions having to do with daily life, what you can do, um, it turns out that there was a substantial impact of the headache on quality of life at three months. That did not change over five years. The headache still had a substantial impact on quality of life. So, um, so I think the bottom line when you, when you bring all this data together is that headache is not insignificant. It, uh, it occurs in well over a third of the population and when they do have these headaches they are migraine-like for the most part and they don't go away in, this, in these people. Well, I think we are going to keep following. The nice thing about the traumatic uh, brain injury model systems is that you serially enroll patients into this database and we've had patients now that we followed for 20 years. Um, I think that not uh, the, the, the study we did was a special study using that TBI model systems database, and it was all about headache. But I think um, there are a lot of things to study. We're looking at mood changes, at PTSD, at depression and anxiety. Um, and of course, the next big thing is the treatment. So right now we're trying to use migraine-specific medications to see if they work as well in migraine-like um, headaches after brain injury as they do in the primary headache uh, disorders. Don't tell your patients that their headaches will be gone in six weeks to three months. Um, I think you need to leave the door open to um, your patients coming back as their headaches come back. Um, I, I don't, uh, there may be, there also may be a, uh, a point where headaches after brain injury do become primary headaches. And by that I mean if you had a 16 year old who had a soccer injury and has never had headaches before and has headaches, but mom has migraines and her grandmother had migraines, then she may become a, a primary headache disorder person. That's a little tricky in terms of educating people. But again, I think the primary care physician has to realize that these headaches may last a long time and be there for the patient. So education, education, education.